Nowhere to Call Home by Cynthia De Felice, Chapter 26 Four days later, the train arrived at Union Station in Chicago. Frankie stood for a while on the street outside the station, just looking around. Stupot had been to Chicago lots of times. Maybe once he had stood in the very same place, on the very same sidewalk. She liked to think that he had. She liked knowing, too, that Big Chi was a crossroads for hobos from every part of the country. Junius had promised her that if he went tramping, he'd show up at her Aunt Bushnell's door. She felt her face lift in a smile at the thought. After asking a passerby directions to her aunt's street, she decided to walk there, even though it was several miles north of the station. She was used to walking. It would give her a chance to get a feel for this new city, and to think about what she would say when she was actually face-to-face with Aunt Bushnell. Frankie wasn't afraid, but she knew that her aunt had good reason to be angry with her. Frankie had, after all, caused her aunt weeks of worry, and for that she would try to make amends. The odd thing was, she no longer felt like the same girl who had run away so thoughtlessly, without any idea of where she was headed or what she was leaving behind. Now that she had met Vera, Dot, Plain Jane, Blink, Peg Legal, and all the others, she knew how foolish she had been to envy their lives and to think hers was so hard. Compared to the boast she had met, she was lucky. She had a place to go. In time, she would learn to call it home. And yet she was not at all sorry about her days on the road. How could she regret having known Stewpot? How could she regret that Frances Elizabeth Barrow had discovered what it was like to be Frankie Blue? She thought she'd be ready, but when she finally reached her aunt's street, her stomach began to flutter and her steps slowed. She lingered on the sidewalk, taking careful notice of every detail of the neighborhood. The stately brick and stone houses had tall windows covered by curtains and shutters drawn against the December chill. A wreath decorated one door, a sprig of holly another. With a start, Frankie realized that Christmas would be coming soon. She stopped in front of her aunt's house and gazed up at the windows, trying to picture what it was like inside. Junius had said she'd be able to continue her music lessons in Chicago. She hoped Aunt Bushnell had a piano. Hitching her bag firmly across her shoulders, she took in a deep breath and stepped up to the gate to let herself in. A mark on the white paint of the gatepost caught her eye. As she stepped closer to examine it, her eyes widened in disbelief. Scratched into the wooden post was a crude picture of a cat, two circles with pointed ears and whiskers, stick legs and a tail. Frankie checked the address again, and an incredulous laugh burst from her mouth. She stared with amazement at the sign left for his fellow travelers by an unknown hobo. A weight she hadn't realized she was carrying seemed to fall from her shoulders. Unsure of how welcome she would be, she had tried to prepare herself for the worst but she had never ever imagined this. She opened the gate and walked up the brick pathway to the door, her heart pounding with anticipation. After taking one more deep breath, she reached for the heavy brass knocker and let it fall.